Well, hey crafty friends and happy Sunday to you. It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on this episode of Christ and Crafting, I'm so excited. We're going to create something that looks like this. And it's super easy and oh my gosh, it involves a palette knife. These are just the ones that I've picked up at Dollar Tree. It's going to involve some ink from MagnoliaDIY.com. It's going to involve some watercolor paper. And then it's going to involve um, a thick stencil. So it's, uh, it's a really good project. And I honestly think that this is pretty it. It could be framed. Um, okay, so let's start at the very beginning. As you're hopping on, say hello so I know that I'm not just here on a snowy Sunday afternoon in my craft room talking to myself. Um, feel free to ask questions, feel free to sprinkle, all of that good stuff. Okay, so the main ingredient really of this project is watercolor paper. And I'm using what I have on hand. I can't find my smaller books. So this is Canson brand, C-A-N-S-O-N brand, watercolor. Um, it's cold press, it's 140 pound, uh, which I think that's the weight of it, and this is 11 by 15. You can get watercolor paper in all kinds of different sizes, and you can pick it up all over. I mean, this I think I picked up at Walmart, and it's not terribly expensive. But what's important about watercolor paper versus... Um, scrapbook paper, computer paper, that kind of thing, is that it ha it's so hard to show you, but it's, it's not completely flat. It's like it has bumps. So you might be able to do this project on a stretched canvas as well. I haven't tried it. Okay, um, so this is where we're going. And let's get started. All right, on a glass plate, <laughs> on a very, very messy glass plate. Let me scratch this over. Let's see if I can come down a little bit further. It's going to cut off my head, but I don't care. Okay, on a glass plate, I have some inks. And I'm just going to scoop out a little bit more. And I'm just basically putting a blob of three colors of ink because I want it to resemble the earth. All right. Um, oh my gosh, and we're going to be talking about God's agape love that he has for us as children. And, um, oops. and what I'm thinking about that is that as we go into the Valentine's Day season, or just in general, as we're thinking about love, I want to always remember God's love. And of course, we love people too, and things, and ourselves, and all that business. But um, I hope this project will remind you about God's love and how that is so, so much more than that, these other earthly things. Um, okay, let me clean up my hands because I'm a mess. I see lots of people hopping on. I'm so glad to have you with me. Um, feel free to ask questions. All that normal good stuff. So I knew what I was going to be talking about today, kind of yesterday, but I didn't really have a vision for my project until the middle of the night, of course, when I was not sleeping, and I was thinking about... Um, the earth and doing a project that had that somehow kind of reminded me of the earth. Okay, so here's our messy plate. You could use a paper plate too. And uh, like I said, these are my Dollar Tree. Um, they're my Dollar Tree palette knives. And I actually like them better. I think this is how they come. You get a set of three. We're just going to use these smaller ones. But um, I actually like them better than my metal palette knives for this project. I did experiment with that, and I didn't like it as much. Um, so what you're going to be doing is 
is we're creating the earth, and it's sort of a multi-step process. And I'm going to start by basically, well, I'm going to put a little bit of water with my spritzer on my colors. And then I'm basically going to be dipping this flat part right here into my ink. And we're going to start to make a circle. And don't worry if it isn't a perfect circle. You can sort of work on that as you're going along. Okay, I'm going to pick this up in just a second. Okay, so here's the start not super lovely just yet. I see lots of you guys hopping on. Oh my goodness, and thank you so much for the stars. I appreciate that. Okay, now we're going to fill in. And as you're looking at the earth from space, not like I've ever done that, I imagine what you see, what you would see, is um, a bunch of blue for all the oceans, and then, um, either green or brown for the different continents. So we're just going to keep adding blue. And then if you, um, if you want, you could, you know, try to, um, to make your palette thing actually look like the way the earth would look with continents and so forth. But um, I'm just going to do kind of like a North America, South America, Europe, Asia, and Africa, kind of. <laughs> Very um, not specific. And I'm using the same knife, the same palette knife. I have two others. Well, I have a third, actually. I'll show you that in just a little bit. I have been playing around with this project for like three hours today, having so much fun um, figuring out what, what I like, uh, what I think looks the best. So I'll show you one of my attempts that my husband and my son both said that it looked a little too busy, and I agree. So I'm just dipping this part into my ink over and over and over. Let's take a little bit of this uh, magnolia green. So on here I have the navy blue ink, the emerald green, and the magnolia green. And um, I know somebody's going to ask, do you have to have these inks to do this project? No, you don't. Um, you could try this project with acrylic paint or something like that. You could even try it with chalk paint. Um, I'm just using what I have. <laughs> and um, I like to, uh, I like to make things, to make like a watercolor effect with ink. So I thought, I wonder how it would look to do um, a palette knife looking thing. Okay, so here kind of are the, <laughs> the continents. And now we're going to just basically fill in with blue. I'm going to water it down just a little bit. Each one of my projects that I've done so far, I have four of them, looks totally different. It's so crazy. So, what do you guys think so far?
sometimes the hardest part about this kind of a project is knowing when to stop. Um, And um, to do this, you really just need to try. Uh, watercolor paper is not expensive. Um, you can get it all different sizes. And just, um, just experiment and see what you like. This is really fun. I don't know what you could use if you don't have a palette knife. But you can get palette knives at any kind of craft store, and you can find them also um, at Dollar Tree. Okay, so I think I'm going to say that that is good for our earth. But now what I want to do is create a little bit of a, almost a kind of haze around it. So we'll see how this works. So it looks like it's spinning. This is also going to camouflage if you don't have a perfect circle. So I'm just lightly rubbing my palette knife on here and then I'm gonna do a little bit out to the side where we're gonna be stenciling. more like the earth than any of the other ones that I have done so far. So I could dry this. And I think actually what we'll do is we'll let this dry on its own for a few minutes while we work on the one that I did before I came live. So, what's everyone doing? Yeah, Doll Teresa says Dollar Tree has nice palette knives. The plastic ones are even nice there, I think. I'm just trying to... Now, I didn't want to get that blue ink on anything. Okay, so before I came live, I did this one. And this is the one we just did. You can see they all look different, huh? And this is the one that my first, one of my first attempts. Um, I think actually, maybe I like the one that we did today the best. I don't know. They're all interesting. Okay, so this, I'm going to just give it a quick blast. white cap on them from Magnolia. They are typically for fabric and ceramics and they need to be heat set. But you can use them on paper um, and you don't need to heat set it with an iron or anything. Um, that's not necessary because you're not going to ever wash it and you're also not going to be touching it a lot. So it, you can use ink on something like a watercolor paper or on a canvas um, to create an effect like this if you want to do that. Um, all right, so 
So then the next thing is, uh, Magnolia has so many awesome stencils that are all fake. This one says, we're going to talk about this first. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5, 8. And this one says, I am a child of God. We're going to talk about that too. And I have, I mean, seriously, I have a whole pile. <laughs> we have a whole bunch of faith stencils. So if you're looking for something, um, just click on the stencil link and, and look through it. So I think I did the first one with I am a child of God. So we'll do the while we were yet sinner stencil here. And um, just to make it stand out, I'm going to use black chalk paste. So we're not painting, so uh, I'm just going to use plain old black chalk paste. I probably would not do ink for this part. Um, so, okay, and I just buzzed it to make it so that it'll be easy to get it up when we're done. Uh, because these stencils are sticky. I just want to get it kind of straight. And it's going to go over the top of the earth. Can you see that? All right. And uh, now I just need some black chalk paste and a squeegee. And I'm going to quickly do this one, and then we'll come back and we'll do the other one too that's just drying right now. So you don't need very much chalk paste, um, especially if you're working on paper, you really don't. You don't want to keep going over and over and over it because you don't want to push it underneath the stencil and have it spread all out on your watercolor paper. So I'm just applying it and then I'm pulling off the globs. So I don't know if you have ever studied God's love, agape love, before, or if you've even ever heard that word before. Um, anyways, it's so different from our human kind of love, and I'm excited to talk about that. And I really do hope that that will, that once you know all that, that when you think of love, you will think of God's love. I mean, of course, think of all the other kinds of love, too. Look at my fingers. Uh, but that you'll take a moment, especially during Valentine's season, to think about the ultimate love. Okay. just want to make sure I don't have any black blobs of chalk paste on my fingers. And um, this is what it looks like. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm clearing my stencil face down in a little tub of water over here so it can soak until I can get into the kitchen to clean it. Isn't that pretty? Do you guys like it? Give me a this or a this or a green or blue or maybe green, blue, green heart emoji in the comments if you like this project. Okay, so let's do this one. I actually do think that I like the look of this earth a little better. I need to just dry this edge.
to do, I like to take something that you would normally do one thing with, like you would do fabric or ceramics with ink, and I like to do something different with it. And I thought this was kind of a different project, and I do want to show you these other projects that I did similar. Um, I can't remember if I used ink or chalk paste for those, but anyways, I'm going to show you those two because that was part of my inspiration for today. Okay, I want this I Am a Child of God. We're going to do that again. And I'm fuzzing it because it's a newer stencil and it's sticky and paper can sometimes be a problem with stencils because uh, it can want to have the top layer of paper pulled up if the stencil is super sticky. All I really want to achieve here is just to get it straight. Okay. Let's grab a new squeegee. I'm just picking the big blobs up. And this is what it looks like. And it looks awesome. So what do you think? Isn't it pretty? Um, yeah, so that is our main project for today, but I want to show you a few other ideas. Okay, when I first started playing with this idea, I thought that maybe I wanted to use some of the um, markers that I love so much from Magnolia DIY. And so I, this was my fiddle around sheet, and I also thought that maybe it might be cool to have love 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 from that love pattern stencil that you can get at magnolia diy um, on the earth and so i did this and then i asked my husband and my son of these two which idea do you like better and they both <laughs> said this one because it's not as busy this is too busy um but if you like it just know that you could layer over the top of the earth if you wanted to do this project. So, and then I want to show you these other ones. And I don't want to mess up my stuff that's wet. These were some projects that I did maybe a year and a half ago. Same idea of using, I can't remember honestly if this was chalk paste or ink, but you can use both and almost turn it into a watercolor. And it says, God is able to do far more than we could ever ask or imagine. Ephesians 3, 20. This is watercolor paper. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Act justly, love mercy. Walk humbly with your God, Micah 6, 8. And what I did with this one is I, um, I used a paintbrush, not a palette knife. And I painted this kind of, Thing that sort of could look like flowers on either corner and then I took the black one of the black markers and I just sketched the outside of my flowers and leaves isn't that cool how you can do that 
And then here's another one that I did, that I love. I have found the one whom my soul loves. Song of Solomon 3, 4. Same deal, he, whoops, same deal here with the flowers. I did, I painted, you know, a combination of colors in the shape of flowers, sort of, and then leaves. And then I used the markers to sort of make it more identifiable that it is a flower. So, yeah, those are the craft projects. There's so much that you can do. Love these. Uh, love all the inks. Love the chalk paste. I love the stencils, too. And um, let me just grab my Bible and a chair. And um, I hope you liked the crafting part of this, and I hope you stay for the Christ part, because I think this is pretty interesting. And um, I hope you will, too. Let me get some of this clutter out of my way. talk about is the difference between worldly love and um, God's love. Oh my goodness golly and look at all those stars. Wow you guys are so generous. Um, so let me pray and then we'll go into the Bible and talk more about that and I hope it will really resonate with you and if you've ever felt unloved, unworthy of love, all alone, like you're unimportant, like God is mad at you, or God is apathetic about you, or God doesn't care about you, doesn't see you, doesn't know you. I hope that these verses that we're going to talk about and this idea will um, reassure you. Nothing could be further from the truth. That God does love you, and he loves you in a special way. So, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you, Lord for your agape love for us. Our human minds cannot fully comprehend how wide and deep your agape love is for us. But nonetheless, we thank you for that. And now as I go into the Bible um, to talk about these ideas, I just ask, Lord, that you'll give me the words that you want me to use. And that they'll go out and land in an encouraging way that will be um, that will be an encouragement for the people who hear this message, and that will draw them closer to you, Lord. Um, so I just pray that I will use the words and convey the thoughts that you would have me pray today. Um, and I just thank you for the privilege of crafting and then talking about you, Christ. So be with us now. And I pray all this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Okay, let's see. Unconditional love. Faith says it's unconditional love. You know what? I have that written down. I was, um, this morning I was just sitting in my comfy chair kind of thinking about what what God's love is and um, how is it different from the love that we as humans can have and do have living in this world um, so worldly love there are d many different kinds and um, it's interesting the English language uses the same word love to mean so many different things so it can be a little confusing I could say, I love chocolate. Or I could say to my mom, I love you. Or I could pray to God how much I love him. And it's the same word, but it's a completely different, it has a completely different meaning. So, um, so the English language doesn't make it easy. But there's all kinds of different loves, from love or enjoyment of things, experiences, things that God created on this world uh, that we're experiencing. Um, it can be the love of yourself. Uh, we're not to put ourselves first, but 
God did make us in his own image, and he loves us. Um, so it could be self-love. Um, it could be um, a romantic kind of love. Um, or it could be familial or brotherly love. And for me, I think that one is the closest to what God's agape love is like. Um, but even the familial kind of love is not as uh, wide or deep as God's love because it can be conditional. It could be dependent on the circumstances. Um, it can be self-serving or concerned with self. It can come and go like feelings and emotions do. Um, so it's not... It's not exactly the same as what God's love is like, but I do want to compare um, the love that a mother or a father, I suppose, to has for her baby to God's love in just a minute. So it's not bad. These worldly kind of loves are not bad. Um, they're good things. We were made in God's image, and God is love, and we reflect. We just reflect God in an imperfect way because we're human <laughs> living in a fallen world and we're sinners and we're selfish we just are that's just how the human condition is so we can reflect God's character of love um, out to the world around us but just keep in mind that it's it's imperfect compared to God's agape love for his children, which is the ultimate. It's pure. It's self-sacrificing. A hundred percent. It's unmerited and undeserved. It's not, God does not love us because of who we are or what we've done. It's because, or what we have, or what, you know, what any one thing concerning us is. God loves us with his agape love because he is God. And we are his children. So agape love really is God's character. Um, God is love. And let's go to 1 John. Oh, and I want to tell you about the Bible, but let me read this verse first, and then we'll talk about the Bible real quick. I'm going to 1 John. It's towards the very end of the Bible. Chapter 4. Um, verses 7 to 10. Okay. And um, this talks about God's love and our love. And it says, it starts with, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. This is God, how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, that just thinking that thought makes me just want to weep. Um, because it's not, it's not who we are, it's who he is. And he is love. Um, so another thing about God's agape love is that it, he directs it at the unloving people. And he directs it at the unlovable people. As well as the loving kind of people. Um, and I think that's, you know... When Christ died on the Christ, on the cross for us, he died for those people who were spitting on him. He died for the two thieves on either side, on the crosses on either side of him. He died for the people who hated him, who wanted him killed. Um, he died for the, you know, the horrible centurions that beat him and flogged him and divided his clothes. Um, so that kind of love is just hard for us to understand. 
And the other thing is that God's agape love is deliberate, and it's he demonstrated it. He put it in action. And this is one of the most well-known verses in the New Testament, and I'm guessing that you probably know it. Let me read this, and then I'll tell you about the Bible before I forget. Okay, it's uh, in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. And it says, in red, which means it's Jesus talking, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but to save the world through him. So that is love in action. Uh, that is uh, unselfish love. Um, that is pure love. And that is how God shows us that. And the fact that he doesn't require us to love him before he loves us is also something really um, amazing about God's love. And let's go to Romans now. Oh, and let me tell you about the Bible before I really forget. Okay, so I am reading to you today out of my Life Application Study Bible. Uh, it's New International Version. And in this Bible, I've had it for 20-something mm, 20, 20 years, 22, 23 years, something like that. Um, I have basically written my life in this Bible, and oh, it just makes God's Word come alive to see how God has been present in my life through the things that I've written in my Bible. So what I wanted to encourage you, friends, is that if you don't have a paper Bible, you should seriously think about getting one. It's just not the same thing to read the Bible on the internet as to have a paper Bible in your hands. And the, um, the Life Application Study Bibles have these great notes uh, that really make a lot of the verses that are hard come to life. So if you don't have a paper Bible um, and you're interested in getting one, just say Bible in the comments and I'll send you a link to a place. It's a Christian book online store that has life application study Bibles. They have them in a bunch of different translations, so get the translation that speaks uh, directly to your heart, whether that's New International Version, ESV, um, King James, New Living Translation, you know, whatever that translation is that really reaches you. I suggest getting a, a paper life application study Bible in that translation. And I do believe that they also have large print, which I wish at this time in my life I had a large print Bible because I always have to put my glasses on and off. But I would not switch Bibles. I mean, this is the most precious thing that I own. And I said thing. Um, you know, it's not the same as your family <laughs> and friends. But if we were to have a house fire, this is really the only thing that I would be willing to risk my life to go after. Because my life is in it and because I have experienced God, oh my God. For 20 something years through his word in my paper Bible. So I seriously, seriously, seriously um, recommend that you think about getting one. And they're not expensive. Um, I don't have anything fancy. It doesn't have any fancy gold foil edges or anything. It's just, and it's not a hard book or fancy print or anything. Um, so you, so get, get yourself a Bible if if you don't have one. Barbara Moore says, I agree, I love my paper Bible. 
Yeah, I totally do too. Okay, so, so God's love is not, he didn't say, okay, I will love you if you love me first. He didn't even say, I'll love you, but then you have to love me back. He said, I love you. I love you with agape love. And so it's not conditioned in any way on how we feel about him. Um, which doesn't mean that we shouldn't love him. It just means that, uh, that God doesn't require that. And our human worldly love oftentimes does, does require that. So if you go to Romans, the book of Romans, chapter 5, verse 8. Oh, I'm going to go back to verse 6, and you can see I've written all over this. Okay, it says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But... God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that amazing? So he, he loves the ungodly. He loves us even while we were, we were sinning. Um, and he sent his son. He demonstrated his love by sending his son to die for us while we were still sinners. And that just is amazing. So the best way that I can understand just a teeny little glimpse of what God's agape love for us is, is by thinking about my children. And a little bit over 25 years ago, I had my first son. And then around four years after that, I had my second and, you know, that love that God gives mothers, and probably fathers too, I don't know, I can't experience it because I am a mother. So I just know what it's like from a mother's point of view. But that love that a mother has for her, her own child, whether it's her child in um, her own natural child, uh, an adopted child, whatever the case may be, that motherly love is the closest thing that I can think of to agape love. Because I tell you what, um, that motherly love will do anything for that child, won't it? That motherly child would give anything, that motherly love would give anything for their child. Um, that motherly love puts the child first, no matter what. It's self-sacrificing. It's not dependent on the child's behavior. Oh my word. I remember so many times when my kids were little that I was just so super frustrated with them or that they were, they did something, they disobeyed, you know, or they did something stupid that I had to bail them out of, or just, you know, those typical things that kids do. Um, I didn't stop loving my children through that. I loved them just the same. And it's because of my motherly love, not because of their behavior. And I think that God's love for us on a much grander scale, deeper and wider, is like that. Um, I mean, I've even thought about it, you know, and... And maybe you have experienced this too, how you would just, you would die for them. Um, there's still lots of nights that I wake up in the middle of the night and I just can't stop thinking or worrying about my children. Um, because they're always here at the front of your mind, whether they're with you present or not. And I think that is kind of how the Father's love is for us. So, as you're thinking about Valentine's Day, as you're celebrating Valentine's Day, or any other occasion uh, where love is the focus, let's stop and reflect for a moment on God's love and how amazing that is. Um, 
let's don't just think of Valentine's Day as a romantic love holiday or a familial love holiday or a self-love holiday or you know a friend's love holiday um, let's think about Valentine's Day and how God demonstrated his love for us <laughs> and while we were still sinners he sent his only son to die for us amazing but it's a true story um, so that's what I wanted to share with you today. Let me pray us out. And then please, if you have questions, let me know in the comments. If you want any of the information for the inks or stencils, or if you want to know about what kind of watercolor paper it was, that kind of thing, um, just let me know, and I'll be glad to get that for you. And um, so, Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your love. Thank you, Lord, for that, that mama bear love, that motherly love that you instilled in me and in many others and fathers. Um, we, are a we are an imperfect reflection of you because we were made in your image. But thank you, Lord, for giving us that teeny little taste of what your agape love for us is um, in how we experience our love for our children. And um, Lord, I know that, that this life, this world, this time we're in right now is hard. And I know there's probably a lot of people out there who feel kind of alone, unseen, unloved, unsure. Uh, it's just a hard time. Um, so I just pray that you will pour your love out on those people, that they will feel it, Father, and that they will understand how deep and wide your love for them is. Uh, because it's not that you've walked away from us. It's just that we are not plugged in. And I suppose that's a normal condition of life to go in and out of being in relationship with you and then out of relationship with you. But I just pray that you will draw those people close to you, that they'll, they'll know how deep and wide your agape love is for them. And that they'll think about that this Valentine's Day and in the future when they think about Valentine's Day or any other occasion where love is being celebrated, that they'll think about your agape love. And I, I know, Father, that there are a lot of uh, people with difficult things going on in their lives. And while I don't know any of those things, I do know for a few people, but um, you know everything. You created us. You knit us together in our mother's wombs. You knew our last days before you created our first days. You know how many hairs are on our head. You know the things that we're going through. You know the difficulties and trials and pains and hurts and disappointments, challenges, everything that, that we have going on. So I just lift all of that up to you um, for these people. And ask that you let them know that you do know what is going on and that you are still present you're still reigning and ruling. You're still in charge. You still have a good plan for us, and you still love us. So I just pray that you will let um, these people with struggles right now really feel that. And I just thank you for the privilege, Father, of allowing me to craft, which is something that I love, to talk about my faith, which is something that I love even more, and to share your word, Lord, which is something that I love so, so dearly um, with these people. It is a, it's a huge privilege and an honor, and I just thank you for that. And I pray all of this in your precious Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So I hope that this was an encouragement for you. Um, 
if I can be praying something specific for you, feel free to let me know that in the comments. Or if it's something more personal that you wouldn't want, you know, a hundred people or five hundred or a thousand people to see, feel free to send me a personal message, and I would be honored to pray for you. Um, if you liked this message and you have friends or family or contacts out there that you think this would be an encouragement to them, please consider sprinkling this um, to your social media and spread the love, as they say. Um, anyways, have a blessed rest of your day. I have lots of good stuff coming up for this week. Um, we're going to be using some of the Dollar Tree wood hearts that I picked up, and I have just lots of good stuff planned for you. So I hope you'll join me. Do a this or a this. Say something in the comments. Check to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. And all of those things should increase the chance that Facebook will serve my content to you. But if they don't, just know that you can come to this page <clears throat> anytime by just typing DIY Dreaming into the search bar. And then if you click the video tab, you can look. I have everything labeled. You can look back three, four years at videos that I've made on all different kinds of craft projects and topics. So feel free to come here anytime and to take a look to see if there's something that you want to watch. Alrighty. I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful rest of your day.